Awesome, and the madness continues. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to talk about Patrick Baboumian and Robert Oberst. So, if you don't know, Patrick Baboumian is a vegan strongman and Robert Oberst is a real strongman. So, those two guys had a little fallout, they had a little back and forth. The reason being, Robert Oberst was on the Joe Rogan experience. And on the Joe Rogan experience, Robert Oberst decided to tell the truth, basically, and say that Patrick Baboumian is not a world-class strongman. To get you up to speed, here is the clip. Now, what about food? Like what? What kind of diet are you guys on? Uh, we all basically eat the exact same thing. Yeah. We all d a ton of of meat and rice, and we do a lot of peppers and stuff like that. No one's vegan. No, 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 not any what of us. Isn't there that? Isn't that one guy that Patrick? What the fuck's his name? There's a vegan strongman I've heard of. I don't remember his name, but he's not like uh, he. He's never been the world's strongest man. Get ready! Yeah! Oh! From what I recall, he's never even been invited to World's Strongest Man. So it's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, you can say a lot of things. Like this guy, say, say he broke a record in in like uh, some powerlifting competition that was in a guy's backyard, right? Uh -huh. And they call that a world record. And then all of a sudden, now he's a world record strength athlete because his buddy in his backyard said so. All right. Now that you saw that, Patrick Baboumian just released his What I Eat in a Day video. And today I'm going to react first to his What I Eat in a Day. And then we will watch Robert Oberst What I Eat in a Day video. And in the end, we're going to do the chronometer breakdown so you guys can see which diet is truly superior. Then I start the day off by taking my supplements. Um, I'm dividing the supplements into three um, different portions. Um, one for the morning, one for the midday, and then one for the evening. All right, big surprise. A vegan that starts out his day like a patient, like a sick person. Awesome. You know, a couple of months back, I would look at this, and I would probably laugh and I would probably make a joke. Ha ha ha, so funny. He's eating like an elderly person. He's eating like a cancer patient. But it is not funny at all. Honestly, looking at this, it is just saddening to see. A man that relies on so many supplements, medicine, chemicals, whatever you might want to call them, in order to cope with his artificially created diet a diet that is not suitable for a carnivorous animal aka homo sapiens because he cannot cope with that diet he needs to eat isolated forms and synthetically created vitamins minerals of course he has to start his day with b12 he needs iron because most vegans are anemic and he needs zinc of course because zinc is not readily available on a vegan diet so this is how he starts out his day and that is really saddening. And not only is it saddening, but it's alarming. Or at least it should be. Kids watch his videos. And they take him as a role model. Right? The vegan badass. What a nice guy. Super compassionate. And strong. He's a junkie. If you rely on 15 different medicines just to get your day started, you are a junkie. Mornings, I have B12, iron, and nutritional yeast. And in the midday, I have uh, again nutritional yeast, calcium, and uh, multivitamin. And then in the evening, I have nutritional yeast again, magnesium, zinc, and glucosamine. Uh, I'm going to probably make another video at some point where I explain which kind of supplements I take and why I take them. I think this would kind of explode this video so um awesome as if that what we just saw there is not enough 
No, actually guys, if you really want to see my supplement list, check it out. I'm going to do a extended video on it. A video only for you, my vegan fans that want to be just like me and want to consume not 15, not 20, 500 pills every single morning to be healthy for the animals. Just keep on mentioning what I take and then uh, I take a few more supplements that I put into my shakes and smoothies. This is better than expected. So the first shake that I have in the morning is a protein shake. I mix it with water. Awesome. And the madness continues. It's not enough to chuck down all those pills. Now we need some protein. As we already know, plants do not have protein. Exactly, right? Or at least the protein is not available to us because it is captured in all of that plant fiber. So what do we do? We keep on supplementing, right? Second meal of the day. First, for breakfast, we have some pills. And then we're going to flush it down with some soy protein isolate. But because that is not enough either, we still haven't really replicated meat. What do we do? Exactly. We chuck down some creatine. Oh. I have 80 grams of protein in it. I have at about uh, 5 grams of creatine in it and just a few grams of beta alanine. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, that looks like food to anyone? Anyone out there? Is it just me? Yeah, is it me, the anti-vegan, that thinks that this looks like shit? Come on, guys, please. All the vegans out there, please. Comment section, comment section. Please comment down below. Does this look like food to you? And again, thumbs up. Thumbs up to what exactly? <laughs> Why do you thumb this up? <laughs> so right after my training, I will have a smoothie with... Wow, another shock in this video. A smoothie, really? I have never seen a vegan drink a smoothie before. Black currants from the backyard and frozen mixed fruits, protein powder. It's, uh, by the way, the protein is uh, soy isolate, uh, but I switch from time to time and try different things. I sometimes also use pea protein isolate uh, or a blend of different plant-based proteins. It's um, always try to switch and um, mix it up a little bit. Then we have uh, glutamine. We have better alanine. Again, five grams of uh, creatine, dried greens. Okay, stop, stop. What is this? What is this? Why do you need dried greens? What health benefit is in dried greens? Concentrated oxalates, what is in there? Again, the creatine, the glutamine, BCAAs, branch-chained amino acids. For what? Because your plants do not have enough branch-chain amino acids. Let's supplement it with a synthetic version. And some more soy protein isolate. Turmeric. Real cinnamon. A real cinnamon? Is there a fake cinnamon? Do I miss something? Why do you need a bunch of turmeric and cinnamon? Just excitotoxins to further poison yourself, as if the plants are not enough. For antioxidants and BCAAs, 5 to 10 grams. And then orange and mango juice. Yes, and to top it off, more sugar, right? Mango and oranges. Of course, because all of those fruits, it's not enough. We need more sugar. The vegan diet is a diet suitable for sugar junkies. That should be the World Health Organization statement. Not suitable for everyone, but suitable for sugar junkies. And some water. Uh, again, is this food? Am I looking at food? What is this in the blender? Can anybody explain that? Please, vegan or not, please comment down below. What am I looking at? This looks like some sort of science experiment gone wrong. This is not food. What is this guy doing? He's three meals in and it's still not food. Uh, 
So up to this point, my body has received 160 grams of protein and 100 grams of carbs, and all of that in liquid form. As I want to prevent any stress on my digestive system. <laughs> yeah, of course, to prevent any extra stress on your digestive system. Man, it's so fucking sad. Those people know that something is seriously wrong. You won't get digestive issues if you would eat meat, right? As long as you eat clean food, meat, fish, eggs, in concoction even, with some healthy, clean, starchy carbohydrates, you won't get digestive issues. But as a vegan, you already know that something is wrong and therefore we're just gonna drink our synthetic soy slop to not get digestive upset. Amazing diet. So I'm fit for training before I hit it and then afterwards I want nutrients to be fast so I can switch to recovery quickly. What nutrients? Now let's have some real food. Let's have some real food. Fries. <laughs> About two hours after the smoothie I prepare my next meal which is lunch. Tomatoes filled with goitrogens. Great choice. Herbs and a ton of salt to make them somewhat palatable. So this is the first uh, solid food for the day. Some more oxalates on top, sprinkle it on. It's mainly comprised of leftovers from my birthday party a few days ago. What the fuck is this? What am I looking at? Soy sausage, falafel and fries. <sighs> Why do you do that to yourself? Why do you do that to yourself? More isolated soy proteins in that soy sausage. Super unhealthy. Everybody knows that. Falafel. Probably fried. And fries. Actual fries. Um, so we have vegan sausages, falafel, low-fat oven fries. Of course, a ton of peppers. Grilled peppers. I usually always have something to say. But I'm really lost for words. Do I need to tell you now that this is shit? This is the first real food and it's missing all the nutrients that your body requires for perfect regeneration. You're eating some fries, absolute shitty carbohydrates, the worst probably, right? You're eating some goitrogen containing tomatoes. Then you have some super fried bell peppers, super cancerous. And then you have soy sausage and falafel. Great bro, awesome. Keep promoting this healthy diet to our children. Great job. And other grilled veggies. So in terms of macros, this gives us 60 grams of protein, 250 grams of carbs, and 90 grams of fats. It's actually really shocking to see him here. He lost all of his gains. Musculature-wise, he lost pretty much all of it, and he just got fat. After the walk, I will wait for half an hour or so. And then I have another protein shake. And another shake. Yes, great diet. Yeah, we live in times of absolute food scarcity. It's not like you could walk into the supermarket, Patrick, and get a steak, right? That is impossible. This is what people in the modern Western world will do to themselves. It is really that insane. With all the food abundance that our forefathers have fought for, now we're just going to go in reverse and we're gonna starve ourselves as if we do not have enough food so these are the ingredients for my next meal it's just basically veggies tofu and cooked potato Fantastic! Next meal, just a bunch of nightshades and phytoestrogen latent soy blocks. But that is not enough either. We're gonna spice it up. We're gonna top it off with processed vegetable oils. And the thumbs up again. Yes, it looks so great. Man, come on, Patrick. Don't you see this, dude? It looks disgusting. It looks absolutely repulsive. Why in the hell would anybody eat this? And let's be honest here. I'm going to confess. I ate the same shit myself. I ate the same whole food, plant-based diet. If you even can call tofu a whole food, 
I was eating the same shit. I was eating the same processed protein powders to make the gains, right? Because I myself saw there is no other way. On a whole food plant-based diet, you can't eat another way. If you eat only beans and grains, you won't absorb the protein. So therefore, you will have to rely on processed foods. The soy protein powders and the tofu. All of those foods are generally eaten in really small quantities. In Asia, I lived in Thailand, people eat small, tiny bits of tofu. Nobody would ever, ever in their life rely on tofu as a protein source. But Patrick shows us how it is done correctly. Okay, so this is meal number five. It has uh, 40 grams of protein. 100 grams of carbs and about 15 grams of fat that mainly comes from the curry paste um, that I put on the zucchini uh, to make the meal a little bit more fun. To make the meal a little bit more fun. Yeah, because it is already so much fun, right? <laughs> Man, let's be honest, that looks like a plate of sadness. Absolute sad. Just dead food. All of those plants have to be cooked, of course, to make them somewhat available, somewhat digestible. And they are still far from digesting well, of course. But, nevertheless, you will have to cook the shit out of those nightshades and the processed soy in order to absorb a little. It is absolutely nonsensical. Why would you eat this? Uh, and that's... Uh... Fake smile last main meal um, I'm going to have uh, another snack later on in the night uh, in the evening um, that's gonna be uh, peanuts um, and I'm going to get another 50 grams of protein there more inflammatory omega-6s paired with aflatoxins absolutely fantastic choice go for it um, and then I finish the day with uh, protein shake what else right what else uh, I actually thought it's gonna be fun to record this video. I was looking forward to it and first I was kind of excited about that We have a protein shake here a smoothie there. Hey, hey, we can make fun of the vegans But now looking at it is just absolutely pathetic. Honestly, how many shakes did you just drink because it wasn't enough? I have to drink another protein shake in order to show that vegans can get enough protein No, you're not showing anything. You're not showing shit because this is not food Anybody can gulp down a tub of protein powder and pretend that their diet has enough protein. What the hell are you doing? Just before I go to bed, and that's another 50 grams of protein. Okay, so that was our day. Uh, we have uh, 410 grams of protein over the day. We have 470 grams of carbs. We have 200 grams of fats. Overall, we have uh, 5,000... 320 uh, kilocalories. All right, thank God that is over. Now we're gonna see some real food. We're gonna check out Robert's What I Eat in a Day. Unfortunately, we do not have a full days of eating video here, but we do have a reference range. After that, I'm gonna compare both their diets on chronometer. A normal trip to the grocery store, I'll go through and I'll get my vegetables. Spinach is my favorite green. If it worked for Popeye, it could work for Strongman. All right. Unfortunately, I have to critique Robert here as well. Straight away, he bought into the lie that we need greens to be healthy. Spinach is oxalate ridden. Absolutely shit. If you want to have kidney stones, go for it. I'm stocking up on rice. This bag right here probably lasts me um, about a week bag of rice as i said many many times before white rice is very easily digestible and therefore if you are into strength sports such as strongman or bodybuilding this is the right carb source for you you know if that on a typical day i'll consume anywhere between 15 and 20,000 calories all right eggs 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 first protein source and a great choice eggs absolute classic and a very good one. Of course, for muscle building and overall health, eggs are fantastic. A great source for B vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, K2, and whatnot. Eggs are a fantastic protein source. Like this right here will last me a day normally. 
Um, I, I eat eight to 10 eggs for breakfast. I eat boiled eggs for snacks throughout the day. So lots of eggs, running out of room. We gotta get a ton of meat. I'll do two of these for one lunch. Again, great choice, fatty cuts of meat. Now, buying it off the supermarket, is that the right way to go? No, me personally, I source everything from ethical farms or from the butcher. That is my only critique point here, but on its own, this guy knows what he is doing. Intuitively, consciously, subconsciously, does not matter. The choice is right. All of those cuts contain a lot of vitamins, minerals and nutrients that you won't find in isolated soy protein or tofu. Four of these. Nice, nice, nice. This is basically going to take all of their pork. All of this turkey. And this one will be my meat for the day. Basically cleaning out the meat section. See the emphasis on meat? This man knows what he's talking about. If we follow our instincts and if we follow basic sport nutrition, we already know what works. Tons and tons and tons of meat. Everything's good. Yeah, I think I took all your meat over here. It's all good. I'm a, I'm a strong man. I just came from the gym. Nice, yeah, nice. So See, so you basically do what I do, but you don't eat all the meat. See, one look is enough. And he knows that that lady is not eating enough meat. No, what are you, 25, 26? Oh god, I love this. Uh, uh, it's got your two different types of noodles, two sauces to two salsas, then sausage and your beef, and that's a pretty good meal. That is a pretty good meal indeed. This man understands what real food is. Of course, as I said, as a strength athlete, you will need carbohydrates. Now he chose some pasta. Again, pretty easily digestible. Me personally, not a fan of gluten, but not an enemy either. If you digest it well, go for it. And he combines it with fatty cuts of meat. And of course, no excessive amounts of vegetables either, because we all know that that fiber will lead to digestive distress, especially if you're eating a lot of calories like those strong men need to do. Patrick Baboumian ignores his instincts, he ignores his gut, he ignores basic physiology and chooses vegetables over meat as a strong man. Vegan logic. My dad made it when I was a kid and his dad made it for him. You know, it seems like every time the recipe gets passed down to a new generation, it changes a little bit. So now we're grilling, got our sausage going, got our beef going. We are rocking and rolling. The true tradition of the pasta is not the food. It's the gathering of people. The gathering of people. See, we have an actual human here, an actual human that understands what food is about. The bonding experience over meat. That cannot be underestimated. If you just compare those two guys, not even the food that they're eating, but just how they come across. You see a happy, happy guy here, man. A real human, lifting heavy ass shit, eating real food. And then you see synthetic Patrick. It smells so good. I love the smell of sausage while it's cooking, you know? Of course you'll love the smell of sausage, man. <laughs> it's the best smelling meat there is. You know, it's got to taste good and it's got to have a high property of protein. Exactly. Again, common sense. Has to taste good and has to have high property of protein. It's that simple, man. This is what bodybuilders and strong men do. Everybody else is lying to you and to their own senses. Ridiculous. This is a really good meal for a strong man. So, you know, the fact that it tastes good makes it just super food for me. My wife, she'll eat about three quarters of a pound of meat a day. I'll eat three and a half pounds. Exactly. Round about 20 eggs and three and a half pounds of meat. Solid. There we go. Now all that's left is to add the sauces. It looks pretty much done. All right, everybody, let's eat. This right here. So just had a nice hard workout. Get a bunch of good meats, good carbs right here. Again, good meats and good carbs. Yes, should be common sense. Eat this down, feel nice and good. Take a nap, wake up, 
feel like Superman. This is super food for Superman. Right on, Robert. Super food for Superman. A man that truly knows what he's doing. Obviously, otherwise he wouldn't be among the world's strongest men. So now, guys, let us check out his day of eating. Actual eating, not slurping down smoothies and shakes. And check it out in chronometer. After that, I'm going to show you how Patrick's day of eating looks like. All right, guys, and we are in chronometer. As you just saw, we didn't have a full days of eating. Therefore, I had to gather information on the internet from several pages to piece together a full days of eating. And this is what I came up with. We have 20 large eggs. We have orange juice freshly squeezed. We have 18 ounces of ribeye steak. We have one kilogram of minced beef. We have six cups of white rice. We have 11 cups of pasta, one bunch of spinach, four pork sausages. We have 400 grams of marinara sauce and two large potatoes. All of this is adjusted for the weight of Robert Obers which is a shocking six foot seven and 410 pounds. Jesus Christ, that is crazy. So with all of this eaten, we reach 14,342 kilo calories, 731 grams of protein. I have to laugh here. 1,892 grams, almost two kilograms of carbohydrates and 425 grams of fat. This is absolutely redonkulous. So, needless to say, if you eat that much, no matter what you eat, even if you would eat potatoes, for that day you would pretty much get all of your RDAs covered and, of course, go beyond. Anyways, we're still gonna browse through quickly. So, as you can see, carbs are, of course, covered. Fat is covered as well. You can see a lot of saturated fat consumed. And we have to critique here that he consumed more omega-6s than omega-3s. I would definitely recommend to eat more fish, if possible, raw. Protein, do we really have to talk about that? Of course not. All the measurements are in 800% to 1,200% range. So this dude definitely doesn't have to worry about protein. Same goes for the B vitamins, for the vitamin A, vitamin D, E, K. Everything is well, well covered and beyond. An absolute excess, of course. And the same goes for the minerals. So guys, to sum this up, of course, this man gets enough nutrients. That's his least concern. Of course, it is not healthy either to eat this way. And I'm sure that Robert knows that for himself. Robert is eating for function, to be the strongest man on this planet. And therefore, we need an excess. That is just what it is. But in terms of healthy, of course, it is not healthy to consume around about 15,000 calories. Nevertheless, all the nutrients are derived from real food. Now, let's check up Patrick's full day of eating. And again, everything is accounted for. His weight, last time I checked, was around about 120 kilos, even though I have to assume that he lost even more weight. And his height is 5 foot 7. So substantially lighter and shorter, of course, than Robert. Okay, so guys, as you just saw, in Robert's case, I didn't list any supplements. And I'm not gonna list the 100 pills that Patrick consumed. We have no proof that those supplements truly work. But for his sake, I'm still gonna list the soy protein isolate. So at least we can see what Patrick tries to achieve here. But don't you worry, once we have all the measurements, I'm gonna show you his full day of eating without protein powders as well. All right, so what do we got? 90 grams of soy protein isolate, 100 grams of black currants. We have round about 250 grams of mixed tropical frozen fruit. Of course, you always crave frozen stuff when you are anemic. 
and we top it off with some mango orange juice around about two cups then surprise surprise we have soy protein isolate again and <laughs> Uh, two soy sausages and of course falafel, five pieces. We top all of that up with 500 grams of french fries and some tomatoes, red bell peppers and continue to gulp down on soy protein isolate with flag seed oil. Then we have two baked potatoes, some zucchini, some red bell peppers again and some curry paste. For our protein needs, we're gonna choose tofu. Great choice, Patrick. All right, and we're gonna continue with more omega-6 plant oils in forms of peanuts. And then, as you already know, we're gonna end the day with more soy protein isolate. So, that leads us to around about 5,000 calories and around about 400 grams of protein, 390 grams of carbohydrates and almost 200 grams of oils. The reason why I say oils and not fats is because we do not find any real animal fats in plants. It's all oils. So let's check this out. Doesn't look too bad at the first glance, right? I am aware that both athletes probably drink water but you can see that the food itself doesn't contain much water content in Patrick's case here because he cooks everything that food is very very dehydrating. To keep it 100% honest here both athletes have around about the same amount of fiber. If you eat that amount of plant foods you will run into issues either way. Here you can see the omega 6 to 3 ratio is out of whack as well. On top of that, the problematic factor that all of that is simply plant oils. It doesn't even matter that Patrick added some flaxseed oil to the mix. He simply won't get enough animal fats. And you can see that in the saturated fat area that Patrick doesn't get enough saturated fats. So by the looks of it, he's getting plenty of protein. Yeah, obviously because he chucked down four massive shakes. And let's be honest, 90 gram. That is not a shake serving. That is three shakes. He had two 90 gram shakes, which equals six protein shakes. And then he had two round about 60 grams of shakes, which is two serving each, which equals two four protein shakes. So that means he drank 13 protein shakes that day to get enough protein as a vegan. So obviously he's lacking B12 in the vitamin section and vitamin D, something that no vegan can get no matter how efficient his conversion rate is. And chronometer shows good mineral stats as well. So you might think, Bobby, what's the fucking point, right? We can see that this guy eats enough and he gets all his minerals and vitamins. Guys, as I said, those foods are problematic because they don't deliver any quality fats that is out of the window and on top of that all of this is synthetic and artificial of course you can trick chronometer but you cannot trick common sense if you see this stuff on chronometer you might think yeah that looks good great he gets all his vitamins and minerals the question is of course the conversion rate but you know what why should we play Patrick's vegan game. I didn't list any supplements for Robert Oberst. So now we're gonna step it up a notch and we're gonna delete all the soy protein sludge. And without the soy protein we see that Patrick drops 1000 calories. So this dude really drinks 1000 of calories in forms of supplements. So let's check it out now. What do we got? 4000 calories and we only have 130 grams of protein left. The rest stays of course the same. 390 carbs and 180 grams of fats. But let's have a look what is truly left in our chronometer breakdown. So as you can see Patrick gets a minuscule amount of BCAAs. Yes I know chronometer shows that he got enough. Absolutely. Why do you need more? Because he is a strength athlete. 
this chronometer breakdown only displays what you would need to survive. But we're talking about world-class strength athlete here. This is what Patrick aspires to be. And with a measly amount of 4.5 grams of isoleucine or 5 grams of lysine, barely 8 grams of leucine, you won't make the gains. And this is why this man relies on protein powders and BCAAs. Listen guys, I'm not against supplements, not at all. But they are supplements, additions to your food and not replacements. And even the supplement companies will agree. With this tiny amount of 130 grams of protein, a man of 120 kilos won't make any gains. A man of 120 kilograms needs at least 240 grams of protein to make any substantial strength gains. Patrick knows that and therefore he has to live on a synthetic, artificially supplemented diet. All right, guys, and this sums it up. Now you saw what each athlete ate and how it looked like in chronometer with and without supplements. The reason why I make this video is to shed some light on the issue that we have with so-called vegan athletes. Nobody can be a vegan athlete. This is something that has to be understood. As a vegan, you're already killing more animals than carnivores. That is a simple fact that vegans are still in denial of. But nevertheless, it is the truth. Once you understand that plant production creates more deaths, then you won't eat more of those plants. If Patrick Baboumian would eat some fish, some meat, instead of his soy proteins, instead of his tofu blocks, he would be more vegan and more ethical than he is right now. But people do not understand it. This is why veganism is a religion. A religion that is dangerous. A religion that endangers our children. Can't you see what is going on here? Which mother wants for her children to become a vegan athlete? No one. Because they would have to eat artificial food. Simple as that. If you want to chill on the beach and do some yoga, yeah, I get it. Then you can get away with a little bit of fruit, a little bit of plants here and there to get by. But once you want to thrive, once you want to get out there, kick some ass, you will need real nutrition. And what do you do then? Only eating beans, grains, you won't get enough protein. So therefore, you will have to rely on synthetic powders or processed foods. This is why vegan bodybuilders eat beyond meat, right? They are advertising for that dog shit. It is the worst food, I don't even want to call it food, on this planet. But you have to rely on it because otherwise you won't get to the protein. The proteins are encapsulated in the indigestible fiber. What don't you understand? It is frustrating to see as athletes or as strong people we will have to rely on artificial food. Don't you understand that? And the end goal is lab-grown meat. Do you get this? Vegans, you are pushing for lab-grown meat. No matter if you want to eat it or not, pretty soon you will. We know exactly that around about 90% are dropping out of veganism sooner or later. You will be an ex-vegan and then there will be no meat. And then you will have to eat lab-grown meat. That is your choice. Do you understand what dangerous agenda you are pushing here? This is why I make this video. Guys, if you enjoy this video, yes, please leave it a thumbs up. But the most effective method to spread this message is of course to share the videos with your friends on Facebook, Instagram and whatnot. Guys, we have to share this message. Otherwise, we will live in a world where we will be forced to eat soy sludge. Me personally, I don't want to live in such a world. And this is why I make those videos to spread awareness. All right, guys. But this is it for today's video. As always, much love and peace.